Hi, hello, and welcome back to Pens and Tea ASMR edition. Except not at all. Um, <laughs> so today, as by the title, my name is Carrie. Today, we're going to be talking about the Quebeco Lilliput Fire. I don't know. I'm in a weird mood. Um, so I was sent this pen from the good people over at Caveco. So I did not pay for this pen, uh, but all reviews are my own because I did not get paid for this review. Um, this is a teeny thinny little pen. My goodness. <laughs> like she's so teeny. Like the, uh, okay. I'll give you a pilot metropolitan, for example. Look, at how teeny weeny this pen is. Um, <laughs> I knew it was small. I have seen one, uh, oh my gosh, long, long time ago at one of the pen meets, you know, back when the world could still get together. Um, but I, I did not remember how small this was. In fact, probably should have had this pulled out beforehand. Where do I keep it here? But to compare, get out one of my many Quebecos, which honestly, I think because I have a couple Quebeco pens inked up, I don't have the sport inked up, but look at the size difference. It makes the sport look large, uh, which is just mind boggling to me. Um, but anyways, regardless of that, this is the Quebeco Lilliput. Uh, so it's a stainless steel pen that has been essentially torched uh, to create a really cool fire blue pattern. And every pen is completely different because it's hand torched. Um, spoiler alert, I will also be doing a review of the Supra, which is also the fire blue version. So essentially it's like it's mommy. <laughs> um, so every pen looks completely different and comparing it to that one, I can certainly, certainly tell. Um, so it's basically just a, a tube uh, of metal that has been etched or torched. Um, can't really see here. I'll show you in the close up. The Caveco logo is on the top uh, and there's nothing on the bottom. There are threads towards the bottom here because when you uncap the pen, it is pretty much unusable <laughs> unless you thread the cap onto the back, which admittedly doesn't go on perfectly smooth every time. Um, and then it becomes still a very small pocket pen, um, but it is completely usable at this point. It is a little bit on the heavier side um, for the size. It's still not a heavy pen because it's so small and it's so thin, um, but it does have a decent chunk of weight to it. Um, as far as the pen itself, it comes with a um, Caveco cartridge, which I basically dumped out <laughs> and refilled. Uh, and in here is Robert Oster uh, Antelope Canyon, or Canyon Antelope, Antelope Canyon. Um, it's one of the Pen Chalet exclusives. Anyway, I refilled their cartridge, um, but it does, I believe, fit the small um, Caveco um, push converter, but it doesn't fit any standard size converter. Uh, steel nib, I have one of their premium nibs in here, um, but it comes with the uh, regular steel. Um, this is still a steel nib. It's just their premium version. Um, very small grip section, like super small. So a lot of people complain that the Pilot Metropolitan grip section is too small. Uh, this is even smaller. So, Definitely, definitely small. This pen is not meant for long writing sessions. It is simply meant, I believe, to kind of throw in your pocket, take with you, uh, take out for quick notes, um, and then put it back in your pocket, basically, because it's very, very small. Uh, the longest I've ever written with this was about 40 minutes. I tried to do an entire journal session with it, um, and it did become a little bit uncomfortable. Just that grip section is really, really narrow. So I was finding that I was gripping it like really tight. It's not slippery in any 
way, shape or form. Um, if you're worried because it's metal, you're worried about like metal grips being slippery. This isn't, um, but it just, it's very, very narrow. Um, but this is a perfect pocket pen. I think this is like the ideal pocket pen. Um, because it's metal, you don't have to worry about it. You can do whatever you want. You can toss it, put it in your pocket with keys. You can like just destroy it essentially. Um, and nothing bad I think is gonna happen to this little guy. Um, you might lose it if you're a purse person, I am not. Um, but you know, it'll, it'll probably end up at the bottom of your bag, um, but it will pretty much do you justice anywhere. Um, there's not a whole lot to say about it. It's a teeny, teeny, tiny little pen, but I can say more in the writing section. Okay, so the quick brown fox jumps out with a lazy dog. Uh, this is a medium premium steel nib from Caveco, and the ink is Robert Oster uh, Antelope Canyon. That's what it is. Um, so the pen itself, not very wet uh, at all. Caveco is not known for being super wet when you first get them. Um, I do usually modify them a little bit to be a little bit more wet than that, um, but these are very dry, um, and they do feel like they have some drag on the paper. Um, that said, I've never had any hard starts or skips with them, um, and basically, from what I've learned from other people telling me in my own research, the premium steel nib essentially just means that um, the people at the factory take more time to... Uh, essentially tune it so they make sure that it's polished correctly um, that it'll be smooth um, and they just essentially pay more attention to it um, is it worth the extra money though to be honest no not in my opinion um, it's like an extra 40 euros I think um, from what most people have been telling me uh, it's about an extra like 50 or 60 Canadian dollars so America you're probably around 40 or 50 bucks um, to me, it's not worth it. To I'm just going to be flat out honest. It, it isn't. Um, you know, I appreciate that Caveco sent me these. Um, and they are definitely a little bit smoother. You can feel a bit of a difference. Um, but, I mean, is it worth the, the price jump? No. I think 10 seconds on micro mesh with your original Caveco nib and like five seconds maybe widening the tines to, you know, get it to write a little bit wetter if you want um, is, is all that, that Caveco needs. Um, so to me, not super duper worth it, but it still writes really well. Um, I don't love the metal feeling as far as like a permanent pen in my collection, um, but I can absolutely 100% see the appeal um for why other people would really really love this pen uh, and this would be a really cool one to just shove in my pocket and uh go to town you know um reverse writing um you can there's not really much point to it though to be honest um oh yeah and stiffness it's definitely a very stiff nib you're not really gonna get a whole lot of flex like just a teeny tiny bit um, but you got to push really hard and it's not meant to do that um, so would I recommend the pen yeah probably um, but I would not recommend really the upgrade to the premium nib um, if you happen to find it like super 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 cheap then go for it um, I really like the look of the fire blue that's just gorgeous um, so the pen itself would I recommend yeah but the nib I think you're okay sticking with the regular steel nib. But that is my opinion, and you can make your own. <laughs> but I do appreciate you watching this video. Uh, if you liked it, hit the like button. If you liked it a lot and haven't yet done so already, do hit subscribe. New videos come out every Monday and Friday. Uh, and my pen book ink thingy on Tuesdays. Uh, so as always, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye.